a really exciting process as everything has unfolded. If you go back about 15 months, that's when we did the ceremonial groundbreaking. So the actual construction, which started 14 months ago, really has flown by. It's gone by very quickly. When we started on this, the museum and the foundation said, hey, here's what we like about building two and three, and this is the improvements we want to make. And the fact that so far we've been able to deliver on those improvements and from what the museum has fed to us and what restoration has fed to us when they come in and they look at the finished product, um, not only is it meeting their expectations, but it's exceeding their expectations. So, and I'd say mission accomplished. Every day was a new challenge. A uh, lot to learn, it was very exciting. Um, so every day you see a little bit more progress and honestly, it just it's very rewarding, very fulfilling um, because you're not just building a building. I mean, you're really building an environment, an environment to house those artifacts in perpetuity. Um, and that's what we're here for, is to tell that story and to keep that mission going. So, I mean, it's just been unreal. It's like being in a dream every day and it just gets better and better. People describe things as their opus or their legacy, and I think I think uh, when I get to the end of my career, I think this will be one of those highlights. This will be one of those things that that I got to be a part of, that uh, that I can that I can say, yeah, I I helped that become a reality, and it's this, you know, it's my Parthenon or my you know my pyramids, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's this massive thing that I got to be a part of, and the Air Force will get to use to tell the Air Force story for generations to come and uh, I'm really proud of that. I guess why I'm in construction or been in construction it, it's great to see something start out with nothing and end up a finished product when you can see the all the hours and all the work that not only you but everybody's put into the project. Uh, when I first started out here it was just me and a couple of groundhogs and a few people uh, and now you can see we have about a hundred men on site uh, we're approaching the finished stages of the project and uh, it's a great feeling to see uh, that's going to be used, uh, what it's going to be used for and the purpose. Uh, you know, to, to be able to see the team work the way they did um, was a blessing because uh, in the beginning, I will say I was nervous of, to, know, to see how many people were getting involved and what all different departments there were and what the, every interest was along the way. Uh, but to know that we all found a way to work together, have a common goal, kept reinforcing that with the partnerships and the SAG emphasis and having that camaraderie together, you know, definitely is um, very fulfilling to be able to meet the people, learn what's important to them, and to be able to, um, you know, have that bigger picture here. It's not just a building. You know, but it's what all of these individuals come together have an interest for and you know, to be a part of that is you know, pretty awesome. Getting the presidential aircraft over here and the R&D, which uh, have been difficult for most uh, visitors to get to, that's gonna be a great thing, I think, for the museum and, and for all the visitors that come in. I think seeing the mission of the museum and kind of taking that in a little bit themselves, which I know I've done over the years being the program manager for the museum, uh, the design team that did the um, that did the RFP. You know, they they were brought into that, and then uh, the Corps of Engineers was involved earlier, of course, before the project was awarded, because they're the ones they're the contracting agent. I think everybody just kind of saw the mission of of the museum and its uniqueness and so forth, and and we all kind of rallied around that. I think that was really the unifying piece. One of the reasons I'm in this profession is, is every building, you learn something about what's going on in that building and the people that, and the organization. And that's certainly been the case here. Uh, not having a military background and not knowing a whole lot about what the Air Force is about. Uh, this was really a, a great, uh, discovery on my part to understand what the Air Force is all about and the importance of the Air Force and the history of the Air Force. And so that's really been exciting and I'm, I'm very uh, happy to be a part of this and a part of this museum, the, ex the expansion of this museum.
this, this is by far the largest project I've been on, you know, so when I've been working with the core here. But it's, it's just fascinating. Like the, the team works very well together and just walking into a room where everyone's there, it just looks like everyone's all part of the same group and just working towards that single goal. And it's just, you know, blows my mind because I've never experienced that before. The first time I bring my family out here, I'm gonna take them straight to the, the beam where I sign my name and show them that I was part of this building and a part of this project. As um, the chairman of the foundation, uh, I see two important roles for me and my predecessors before me. We basically are charged with the fundraising, focusing all, harnessing all the resources to, to get the funding to make this happen. And then of course to me, the second role is really important too. It's keeping the spirit of the team up, making sure everybody has is getting through their issues, is making um, making their contribution, um, and uh, it's those two things I think are really the most important thing: the fundraising and the people. The most rewarding thing for me was is to watch the the team members uh, first get started with the planning as individual teams, and then watch them grow and come together. Uh, it's been an amazing thing to watch everything happen and have everybody work together to make it happen. Uh, it's just an amazing thing. They've evolved. It's been a real transformation. When I look in the faces of the board members and the foundation employees to know that they had a part in, in raising those dollars, whether it was flipping a hot dog, selling a t-shirt, running a movie, selling a dog tag, running a simulator, or going out to ask a donor for some money, that in their own special way, each person, and you can see it in their eyes, they light up like a Christmas tree, to know when they see that building that they played a major part in making that happen. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of that, to know that i am uh, been blessed to be part of such a great team who understands and appreciates the purpose of the foundation and works each and every day uh, so hard to ensure that General Hudson and his team will have not only now, but in the future, the dollars they need to accomplish their mission. Well, the great big crane was really impressive because it towered over everything. And it did its job here and get all, got all the archways up and then went away. So um, really the job then went to all the high reaches and the other cranes that have had to do their work. But all of that stuff has been really impressive. And the best part about it is that this job to date has been done extremely safely. The triple nine crane is it was a large crane out here. It was exciting to see it being uh, assembled and then again dismantled uh, and the expertise with which the operators uh, were able to achieve some uh, pretty, uh, pretty creative stuff with the crane when we put this together. The triple nine crawler, that was such a massive uh, piece of equipment that we had here to do the steel erection. I think uh, the watch that come in, it came in in 12 semi-trucks and it went together in a couple of days and I think everybody was just really amazed at uh, the size and how quickly that thing was erected. Actually, uh, I would say probably a little four-inch grinding wheel that's been used on the, the railing for the painters. No, actually, yeah, the, uh, the triple nine crane is probably the, the best, uh, the largest piece of equipment that I, this is the first job I've actually had that um, had a crane like that on it. We've had cranes before, but nothing to that size. I have a piece of machinery and I have a moment. The machinery is, and I know I'll botch the name, but that really big crane that you had. And then um, the moment was the end of January when that keystone was put in. And you know, if I recall, it was a, a very, very cold January day. And to be standing out there and watch that keystone be set and watching that American flag uh, shaped like a chevron, unfurl, and then the plant on top of that, the tree. Uh, boy, I still get chills up and down my spine when I think about that. And to know that, that the foundation played a part in that is just, uh, again, on behalf of the staff and the board, just, you know, we're grateful to be part of it and glad we were able to make it happen. 
Surprisingly, and this is gonna sound like a nerd, but the whole computer BIM model was probably the favorite thing. I mean, we see cranes and track hoes and bulldozers on every job, but this is the first time I've ever taken a three-dimensional model and loaded aircraft models into it to look for clash detection. So really the whole, for me, the whole technology part as an engineer was kind of fun because we were able to solve a whole bunch of problems and look for things that didn't become issues in the field before we ever put the first shovel on the ground. I'll have to describe it because I don't remember the name, but it had equated to a giant rototeller. So it was this big uh, machine, it was this big like, truck, and it had a bunch of tines on it and it would actually mix in cement into the soil to stabilize the soil. And having grown up on a farm and seeing rototellers, this thing would just look like the, uh, the ultimate rototeller because it just chewed up the soil and dropped in the cement and it was just really neat to see that thing working. The ground shook as it went by. I've always had a fondness for uh, the people pickers, okay? The machines that go way up there and have people sitting up there doing things, painting and working on the roof. And I mean, I have a fondness for those things. I'm not sure I'd ever go up there, but I do have a fondness for those. <laughs> My favorite piece of heavy equipment by far was the BMO machine. So what they did was they brought um, a semi-truck out here and inside of it um, they were able to take the metal and they were able to extrude that into one single piece of, onto the roof. So just to watch that whole process was pretty fascinating. Uh, to watch that go up onto the roof was really fascinating. Uh, to see the GoPro uh, of the roof being steamed was just awesome. Those guys, they definitely earn their keep up there on those high, high spaces, so that was really neat. I like the BMO machine. It was just one of a kind, you know, one of, I think, five in the world. And just going inside and seeing how the little, uh, you know, the intricate pieces of how it shapes those roof panels is pretty interesting. The BMO machine, that, that was pretty unique to be able to, to form the roofing sections on site from a flat roll of metal and run them up over the top of, of the building was, uh, was a pretty awesome sight. And then the, the film with the uh, GoPro on the metal and watching it go over was, was pretty fun too. So that was uh, the triple nine, that was, that's a good one too. And, and seeing that first, that first set of arches go up and the, uh, the keystone piece going in there, was, that was a remarkable day because then we, we really had it, had, it had a shape then and we could see what was going to happen all the way down the line. So that was, pretty, that was a good day.